Good morning, pregame crew. It is Wednesday, April 20th. It's Wednesday, right? April 20th, 6.21 a.m. Mountain Time, 8.21 a.m. Eastern Time. You have found yourself at the pregame show. And what I do is I get you ready for the trading day. We go over indices, commodities, cryptos, movers and shakers of the day. I answer requests as I can at the beginning and at the end. And in the middle, I rip through 25 charts, approximately 25 charts in 25 minutes. Very e efficient use of your time. And then I cut it off before 7 a.m. Mountain Time where we have Dan going live in the room in the Chart Guys community. And if I could get an audio visual check, please. And also, if you are tuning in later in the day, you may want to fast forward nine minutes to it says 6.30 down here if you only want to see the market, market coverage. If you want to see me answer questions, then stay on the line. Thank you, Chuck. Good morning, Chuck. Hey, Roger, Dino, Robert, my girl, Tammy. How are you, Tammy? And Rob, thank you for encouraging everyone to like the video. You don't, it, I appreciate it so, so much. Hey, Andre, Topher, Amira, Asia, Greg, Night Truck. I'm going to go to Andre first. Andre, this breaks my heart. Every time I read this, I've been trading enough to have this happen to me personally and to see it happen to so many people. So when I get asked, what do I do? Terrible earnings. It went against me 30%. Now what? The decision time, and I hate to be the, the jerk who picks you while you're down. The decision was before you bought it, not now. Now you're in hurt mode, and it's hard to even make clear decisions. So if I'm looking at Netflix, I'm just, I would say, okay, you're here. So again, I don't want to kick you while you're down. You're here right now. Okay, what's the low of the morning? 251.75. And you say, okay, if it drops below 250, I'm going to cut it. And then you say, okay, if it breaks above 254.35, I'll add it back. Assuming you want to get part of this oversold bounce. Because remember, whatever trade you exit, trying to buy cheaper only makes sense if the setup works now. Is the setup your style of trading? Are you an oversold bounce trader? If not, stay away from it. If it rips to $300 today, then so be it. But you have to draw a line in the sand and say, this is it. I have tolerated enough overnight. I tolerated too much, actually. And now I'm going to just cut my losses. And I can tell you the last time this happened to me, I just want to be honest with everyone. I don't like when people pretend like they never made mistakes. Not there. Not there. Here. Earnings. Not that one this one. July 25th, 2018. This was the last time I made this mistake. I bought Facebook in the after hours saying, gosh, it's beat up and Facebook's awesome. So here it dropped 24%. So not as bad as Netflix. It, I, I sold it for a loss around 175. And I'm like, oh shoot, look, it went to 188. And then what happened? Went down to 123. So of course, it exceeded the price that I had bought it, but I would have had to wait for a year and a half and sit through this drawdown of my account. And who's to say it wouldn't have kept going? So this is just a great example. This is the last time I ever let it happen to me, and I sold it. I sold it for just a small pop, and I just sat there and like, crap, why did I buy it in after hours? trying to be cute with the oversold bounce. And then a year and a half later, well, if I would have held on to it, yeah, you're a moron. Look at all the money that I would have lost sitting through this drawdown when I could have been trading setups that actually work. So again, I'm not trying to kick you while you're down. I just want you to realize that just tell yourself that you, yes, probably an oversold bounce is coming, but we don't know if it is. And you could be a back holder from up here it's like, oh, it lost the daily high or low. Let me just hold it from here. Then what? You're down like 60% now. Can't even pull it down that far. You're, you're down 60% now. There's something fundamental that has changed about the company. And we have to recognize that even oversold bounces aren't as um, trustworthy in an environment where news and fundamentals have significantly changed. If we look at what happened with... Uh, I know I use my Evernote, but let's just use this right now. I think it's just a good earnings lesson, not just for Andre, for all of us. So Netflix lost subscribers first quarter 
and call it what you will, Russia, um, people just saying, I don't like the content anymore, whatever, it doesn't matter, it's gone, They're, it's gone. Versus adding the two and a half million subs that were anticipated, expected. This is the first time this has happened in 10 years for Netflix. This is the first time this has happened. And, and you know what's funny? It's not even funny. Let me just stay with this train of thought. Something has changed fundamentally with Netflix. Embrace that. And just know that this isn't a few panic sellers. This is different. Things have changed. And it could get whacked a whole lot more and still keep going down. What about the people? And there's not, a, you know, retailers don't make up the big traders. It's the algos and it's the, you know, institutions. But what about the people who are holding right now at 348.61 and can't sell for three more minutes in Robinhood or whatever that is, or until the market opens? I don't think we've seen max capitulation. So just, just remember this, and I'm going to go back and just tell you, not that anyone ask, but right here. When this happened, this moment right here, when I see it dropping 20%, I was driving to a new hairdresser, and then I had to sit there for a three-hour blonding appointment and be able to do nothing, because I, I thought we would get a bounce, and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to sell. And it was so moronic. I know better. I was trained better than this. And I sat there in a hair salon appointment, which I should have been enjoying. I had just retired and, from my job and sold my businesses to start trading full time. Actually, that was 25 days after. So you want to talk about a kick in the pants. It's like, okay, I just sold my businesses and stopped working so I could trade full time. And now I'm going to pull this kind of move. So just know it, it has happened to a lot of people. I know some people are way smarter than me and and have that's never happened to. God bless you, you're a better person than me. However, it happens to the majority of traders and learn. And if it hasn't happened to you, take notes and say that crazy Lori lady said, it happens often and don't let it happen to you. All right, that was a little tirade. I don't think it was a tirade. Hey Judd, good morning. Hit that like button, please. Okay, you want to hear about crowd. Okay, let's let's look at crowd. Okay, crowd had this little daily EQ. We broke bull. We have a little squeeze going on. We're holding above 50 RSI. We have a daily double bottom at 222.16, 222.30. Four hour, we need to get over yesterday's high, 230.76 to change this back, trend back to the upside. The only issue is this is a tall order to ask for the bulls to get over 242. Let me see how tall of an order it is. 8% pullback, not ideal to then zoom, zoom higher. But if, if the NASDAQ can overcome this Netflix debacle, it bodes well for the whole market. And remember, Netflix is 3% of XLC. It, it is more toward the communication sector than just pure QQQ. However, it is a large part of QQQ. So those names that are in the XLC sector that are, are comparable to Netflix like Disney, I mean, this is a big wake-up call for all these streaming providers. Content is king and there, the comp there's competition. The market's saturated. You have to bring it and you're fighting for customers with price. So, you know, does it diminish the value of people like Roku? Maybe. Definitely Disney. Okay. Um, oh, it's 8.30. Only got to two requests. Oh, sweet. That's so nice. Thank you, Roger. You're what? Hey, Jorge. Mary, Derek, Diego. I love you, Night Truck. Strong enough, me, myself, and I, and my dude, Judd. Judd, are you coming to North Carolina? I think I asked you this. Hey, Derek. All right. Let's get started with the market. So, this is who I am. Chark Al Lori. Follow me on Twitter. Chark, get at Chark Al Lori. Check us out, charkguys.com. And I'm part of the Chart Guys community, and we teach technical analysis. We help you trade stocks so you can live a better life. And that's our new tagline for our new website. And I couldn't be in love with it more because isn't that true? We want everyone to just have a better life. And trading can afford you that if you can take emotional control of yourself and stay disciplined. You can have a better life with trading. 
I'm not trying to be a evangelist up here. It's just facts, Jack. Okay, so what I do is I take notes. I already have my notes for the day, and I'm going to copy these over to the Chart Guys community once I'm done. Let's look at indices. Bing, bang, boom. We got another four hour higher high. So let's draw this out so you can see what the bulls have accomplished. Four hour higher high, higher low, and now we've got, okay, it stopped on me, but I can still do it. And then we got that higher high. Huge accomplishment for ES bulls. Something is different about ES and NASDAQ compared to RTY and Dow. Okay, so let me say it in, in layman's terms. Something's, or non-futures terms. Something is different about SPY and QQQ that's a little bit more negative compared to IWM and the Dow who have accomplished something that SPY and NASDAQ has not. RTY, IWM, and DIA, they got their daily trend changes. So now that locks in that low on the Dow, and they could have their weekly bull flag in play. It's a, it's a higher probability now. ES and NASDAQ, look, we got the higher high. Good job. We're not going to slight you, bulls. You got the higher high, but now you got to get the higher low, then the higher high to change the trend. Trend confirmations give you a lot more confidence in bulls versus V-shaped bounces from the low. Okay, so that's ES, NASDAQ. Same thing. I'm trying to give you as big a picture as I can. I'll just draw this one. It's easier. Lower high, lower low, and we got the higher high. Okay, the only issue on this one, I wrote this in my notes, is that we're only getting a higher high with NASDAQ by $2. That is a problem. So we have 14296, and we've only hit 14298. If we can't get through 14300 decisively, we have a little bit of a problem. We've got a fly in the ointment. NASDAQ has to prove it. It carries much larger weight in our market than other names. So super important for NASDAQ to get follow through. And then if it were to get the follow through, we still need that higher low to get that convincing trend change and confirmation. And so Hang Seng was down 0.4. The DAX is up 1.1. So I don't know that we can ascertain a ton. I like to see them. I guess I never establish a, a benchmark for you. I like to see if they're greater than 2% green or less than 2% red or greater than 2% red. That tells me a little bit something about correlations. When they're in the middle and mixed, it doesn't give me a lot of information. So RTY, unlike its buddy SPY and NASDAQ, low or high, high or low, high or high, trend confirmation. Dow, Lower low, lower high, higher low, higher high. Confirmation. And then let's look at the Dow. I'm feeling particularly zen today. It's kind of odd. So I've been pointing out this potential weekly bull flag on the Dow. It held that 34091, getting a candle close above, locking in this low of 34,000. The Dow has been outperforming the market. And look, we're over 50 RSI. Let's go look at RTY. RTY is not over 50 RSI on the weekly, but it is on the daily. So let me make sure I give you the key levels, 14300. You should have that level on the Dow. No questions asked. You should have it. Support 14066. Good morning, Patrick. How are you? RTY, key support 2023, and the new key resistance is, let me clear all this out because we've been making hay while the sun's shining. 204960. 204960 is your new resistance. Dow. Dow resistance 35015. Okay, this is kind of significant for me. This is standing out. Okay, we have a double top here on Dow that we haven't gotten through, and we got a double top on the NASDAQ. Let's watch that. Make sure everybody behaves as they should and get over it with more confidence. And if you were looking at this two hours ago, congratulations, you were prepping. But if you were looking at it two hours ago, you could have possibly taken along on NASDAQ or ES as a potential laggard to YM and RTY. So when a major, one of our Fab Four sisters or one or two of them accomplishes something the other two have not, you could possibly trade those other two as laggard bull moves. So you could have traded that on NASDAQ and scalped about 120 points. And on ES, I didn't do the calculation, but I like those lagger trades where you get that canary who takes the lead and okay, well then somebody else did a bull break. Okay, 
well, maybe I can do something with this information. U.S. tenure, I can't see, a, I can't tell a lot about it. I like that it's red. Oh, and VIX, we're losing it. Yay, says the market bulls. So we had this daily uptrend on VIX. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, lower high, lower low. That's what the market bulls want to see. We want to see this melt. What's that witch? It's like, I'm melting. What, is that Wizard of Oz? Whatever. We want to see this melt like the wick, Wicked Witch of the East or whatever it is in Wizard of Oz. I need to read that book again. So we're breaking the support, but not by a lot yet. So this is something else that's concerning. So let's go to the T account. Not like that. Here. T account. If you're new here, this is kind of... A more recent way of me explaining if I'm more bullish or bearish for the day. So bullish, I like what YM has done, and I like what RTY has done, and I like what VIX has done. Because the VIX is broken to a lower low. What's not good about that is the VIX has not really, we haven't had follow through. RTY, we got follow through, but now YM has a little bit of a double top. Hey, y'all know it. Let's just pretend like y'all know what that means, that y'all know what I'm trying to write. And NASDAQ has a double, double top. So the same things I like that are positive also have some drawbacks that we don't have follow through yet. We don't have follow through on the NASDAQ bull break. YM has more follow through on, let's go look at what level that is, sorry. Where are they double topping at? They are double topping on the April 4th high. So you just got a few things. So I would say we're pretty counterbalanced right now. And of course, if you want to put Netflix as another negative in the T account as making things more bearish, but can the market shrug that off and say that is just one name in a vacuum and they're not related hardly at all to Amazon, Google, Apple, Microsoft that we got upcoming in the next couple of weeks. So maybe we shake this off and this is just, just bad a bad egg in the bunch because their business fundamentals have changed. Good morning. If you could hit that like button, I'd appreciate it. Crypto, Bitcoin, daily higher high achieved. Now we need the daily trend change, daily 50 MA overhead. ETH, daily higher high achieved, testing the daily 21 EMA resistance, hourly trend to the upside, and the daily 50 MA is below us. I've been pointing out to you that there's a little bit of difference. I have a graffiti problem. Is there a graffiti anonymous? So we're testing the daily 50 MA on Bitcoin and Ethereum bounced from it. So Ethereum is definitely stronger than Bitcoin, but we need the higher low, higher high. Bitcoin, we need the higher low, higher high. We need trend confirmations. I'm just going to say TC. We need trend confirmations on NASDAQ, ES, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. Okay, gold. Let me look at my notes. Actually, I want to go back up here. And this kind of goes back to how I started this the morning talking about the Netflix and drawdowns. If I may be so bold, I may be using some hyperbole here, but you just go with me. This may be the most important thing I ever tell you about trading right here, right now. And maybe I'm a little extra this morning. Who knows? Albert Einstein once said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He understands it, earns it, and he who doesn't pays it. Get those day makers. In this case, I have a calculation for you, 1%. Get the 1% and then stop trading. Minimize those drawdowns. Yes, it's in all caps for a reason. It is everything to changing your trading trajectory. Minimize those drawdowns. Drawdowns are a reflection of your inability to accept loss, which is part of being in the trading business. Drawdowns are you saying, I'm not going to sell for a loss because it's going to come back to the green. Freaking get over it. It's part of trading. Accept it. Minimize the drawdowns. How does this work? Look at this fun little calculation. This is thecalculatorsite.com. They have a compound interest calculator. $10,000 initial balance. And let me just stop here and say one thing before I continue. A lot of you come in the room with wanting your questions answered. It's the most important 
thing that you have on your brain. You know how you go talk to your husband, you go talk to your wife, and they have something to say too, but what you have to say is louder in your brain than, than, than you can listen. I'm telling you, some put your ticker on the back burner. Your ticker is not the most important thing of the day. Your trading process, your trading discipline is way more important than that one name that you want answers on. So learn what you can, glean what you can, and then apply what you learn to that one ticker you want answers on. Because the likelihood is you already know what the answer is. You already know what the support is. You already know what the resistance is. You're waiting to see if I'm going to deal you hopium. And I ain't that girl. I ain't going to deal you hopium. I'm going to deal you reality. So just remember, yes, one ticker is fun to get answers on, but it's more important that we work together and go through process and overall, overall market structure. That's my objective here, not answering individual questions. So I'm sorry if that puts you off. If you want your individual questions answered, part of the Chart Guys community, we do it three times a day. We answer all your little heart's desires. Okay, back to compounding. $10,000 initial balance. Let's pretend today. April 20th, 420, you start with $10,000 and you do 1% a day. So today on your $10,000 account, 420 is a marijuana. It's a marijuana uh, saying, say it's 420 time, it's time to smoke marijuana. I learned that from the room. I had no real life experience with that. So let's say you start with your initial balance of $10,000 and your goal is to make 1%, $100 today. And for the next year, you compound that every day, you would have 377 thousand dollars so 377 834 next 420 ten thousand dollars to 377 that's the power of compounding okay so one percent a day minimizing those drawdowns get those day makers and stop okay well thank you chill effect i appreciate it Okay, let's talk about commodities. Weekly bearish engulfing candle on gold. Daily candle holding 21 EMA with a lower wick of buying. I didn't like that four hour bear flag earlier. I still don't like it. Y'all see it? Potential four hour bear flag. Upper wick of profit taking here at the four hour 200 MA. I just don't like where gold is positioned here. I don't know if it's going to take four hour oversold. I have an alert set for it. So I'm waiting for a four hour oversold to possibly nail that daily higher low on gold. Oil. Oil has a potential, it looks better on the 12 hour, potential 12 hour bear flag, but I don't hate this as much as I didn't like gold because look at this daily. We're sitting on the daily 50 MA, we have a daily double bottom and we have the oil inventory this morning at 4.30. So I don't like how this four hour is shaping up and this potential hourly rising wedge, but let me show you all the things. I, mean, I have a lot to say today, I guess. So on oil, just having fun with FIB probabilities, oil inventory scenarios, push down price and hold that 101.50 support and just kind of hang out there. Push down price, yet finish over 103 to save the daily bull flag probabilities. Bulls could push up quickly only to set a four hour higher, lower high near 105, establishing equilibrium. Or bulls rip faces off and hit 200, <laughs> lower probability. But, what I'm looking at is we have this rising wedge and I just don't see a scenario where this is going to resolve before 1030 Eastern. I feel like we're gonna get more clarity and some aggressive bears will be looking to top fish up here. And then aggressive bulls on any spike will be waiting to bottom fish a higher low, trying to nail that daily higher low. That gas. Now, gas weekly candle is not ideal for bulls at moment. There's still time to save it. Daily double bottom as bulls stand tall on that daily ADMA, four hour EQ. Need to get over 735. This is just standing out to me. Look at them. They're just standing tall with lower wicks on the daily eight EMA saying, You can't touch me. And we just got a four hour bull break without a lot of follow through. Not very encouraging for the bulls. So if I were wanting a position in that gas, I would be bottom fishing the 705 on a pullback, looking to see that that four hour higher low last. Okay, we did our commodities, Apple. Okay, Apple looks a little better than when I looked at it this morning. Here's, here's the fly in the ointment for Apple. We're sitting near the golden pocket. We gotta go clear 17127. 
or it's going to be hard for these market bulls, which they're not getting follow through now because NASDAQ is not over 14300. And I think it's primarily due. Of course, Netflix is a pain in the butt for QQQ bulls, but Apple is the problem. Apple has a big, a big hurdle. This is the problem. This candle. When they gave everything up last Thursday on that bearish engulfing, and now bulls got to go take that out in one fell swoop. It's just the probability odds don't favor it. They could do it, but odds don't favor it. Odds favor a lower high, get that higher low, then go take it out. So for me, I think Apple may hold up this little fun rally. So if we're going to update the T account, and if y'all don't like this scenario, this analogy, give me another one. Give me something better and I'll use it. So if we're talking about a bullish day versus a bearish day, Apple is one of my number one problems over here on the bearish side than NQ double top. YM double top and VIX double bottom. That's what's on the bearish side. And on the bullish side, I could say, RTY got a daily trend change. YM got a daily trend change. Blah, blah, blah. I, it's just like, I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling the conviction this morning. It is what it is. Okay, they need to get some moxie and get over 170, then 171.27. Baba, I stole this from, from Dan. I wasn't looking at it. Great ch chart set up, Baba. Bo, I'm like, you did what? You, you unliked it? You're funny. Or maybe I'm funny that I had a little freak out that you unliked it. Okay, so what Dan was looking at with this chart setup is this daily stair step where each candle is establishing a lower high. And what we're waiting for is a changing character bump up over 93.95. And you see I have an alert set there, a bump over 93.95 to potentially enter long and nail this potential weekly high or low. So simple. Fish and hole is 93.95. Fish and pole is how you position yourself within this area. As we approach it, you wait for a five minute tightening range or you wait for a five minute oversold if we pull back. But, and you're also watching NASDAQ to make sure it clears that double top, BTU. Oh, good, Calvin. Calvin, you know what? I appreciate the if-then scenarios that you point that out. I just need to, I need to remember that what uh, resonates with y'all and that when y'all tell me, it helps me kind of structure my education around it. Okay, BTU and METC, these are two coal names. They have had very bullish charts, potential daily bull flags, or we're for sure looking for daily higher lows, odds favorite, let's just say 85%. So I have my alert set here. If you can see the little orange dash line, let me see if I can click on it. You see the orange dash line in my RSI? Tell me when hourly RSI crosses 30 on BTU. And then I'm going to look and the market, it doesn't care that much about the market, these commodity names, so know that. And it's the same, I'm actually, I'm gonna look at the chart setup and make sure that I have bull step in, in the, the trade with me. If not, I'll wait. Same thing here on METC, hourly oversold, bounce. GDX, looking for a daily high or low, the hourly RSI would be, excuse me, four hour RSI would be oversold around $38. So now I want you to see why I'm looking at this. You see how we have enough room for a daily high or low? An hourly oversold's not doing it. So maybe I have to wait for four hour oversold to try to nail that daily high or low. Odds favor is not going to make it back that far, but that would be a high probability setup if it did. Yep. It's a sloppy NQ head and shoulder, inverse head and shoulders for sure. But I, I need that trend change on the daily. I need the trend change on the daily to feel better about it. Okay, Netflix. I had some fibs pulled up earlier, but... Okay, I want to do a fib from this level that stands out from December 2018. So we really just don't have a lot of levels. 252.28, we've broken bear. Your next level is 231.23. 231.23. And below that, you're looking at 103.46. And another way you can do this, I really don't like the way the fibs are helping me this morning. It's just too big of a push down for them to help. 
if I go look over here, actually, I'm going to go to the weekly. That's too busy. Okay. Sorry, y'all just look away for a second. Look away. So I like, we've broken through that low. Yeah, that's it. 250, 231, 23. That's all you got. I can make up all other kinds of numbers. I can draw a pitchfork. I can draw itchy cloud. I can draw all kinds of crap for you. But 231 is what all you got below. Things have fundamentally changed. So remember that. There's nothing. Nothing armadillo voodoo. No armadillo voodoo I can put on this chart to give you another level outside of 250 psychological, 240 psychological, 231, 24. Well, we didn't say you weren't completely crazy, homebody. Don't get don't get jiggy with it. We didn't say that. Kidding. So on Netflix, if you're a newer trader or you're inconsistently profitable. Take this crap off your wish off your watch list today and wish list. Forget about it. This will tear you 10 ways to yonder. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't don't be like that. Don't be that person. You got to trade the hot stock. If you're inconsistently profitable, this is going to eat you up and spit you out. Ninjas, if you want to wait for tightening ranges, and try to bottom fish tightening ranges or wait for it to come test hourly EMAs and top, try to top fish it, then you know what to do. Put your, You know where the fishing hole is to get them lower highs and you know where the fishing pole is. Otherwise, like, don't be, don't be crazy. That's a great way to loot. This is a car wreck. Do not stare at the carnage. Three-day rule. NTNX. Potential 15-minute back burner setup. Uh, I didn't put it on my list over here. NTNX. This had a nice run yesterday. NTNX looks like an hourly bull flag. I would like the first 15 minute oversold on this one. Five minute oversold, I would evaluate, but doesn't mean I necessarily take it. First five minute or 15 minute oversold on NTNX. And it's the same thing for TJX. TJ Maxx got jiggy with it after hours. And I'm on this move, I may go for the five minute oversold versus the 15 minute oversold. Back burner trade setup. They had great moves yesterday. I like the charts. SMH, I just wanted to follow up with yesterday's fun diamond pattern. Look how we broke bull. We broke bull out of it. Bull moving pre-market, 248.11 is key resistance to get over. Can bulls pull off a third day push? And we're getting over it in pre-market. Semis are leading the way here. And if semis want to take over from the likes of people like Netflix, that'll be good for the stock market. And we'll, we could be able to push up over. What's the level, y'all? What's the tattoo level for today on NASDAQ? One, four, three hundred. That is the level to see if the market can resume higher or not. And finally, Twitter. I just, if you want to screenshot this, I wanted to give you some fibs. This is the last day for Twitter's board to accept Elon's offer, and obviously they've rejected it thus far, unless new news comes out today. Elon Musk tweeted overnight, blank of the night, tender of the night, and what he's speaking of is a potential tender offer, so it could see volatility today, and that's where he would just go, from my understanding, go to shareholders of Twitter and say, sell me your shares, and not make it a corporate action, but he just goes around and collects shares from various people, and that's how he takes over. So we have a four hour EQ to be aware of. It's not as clear as I'd like for it to be, but we do have a four hour EQ. I think Twitter could have some nice volatility today. Okay, you like that 10 ways to yonder? All right, what is your chart request? I'll take one because I went pretty long today. I would not trade Netflix at the open with my ex mother-in-law's money. Okay. Now, maybe an hour or two into the day, but I would not trade it at open with my ex mother in law's money. Okay. Uh, I saw someone ask about Zim. Okay, Zim, we're looking for a weekly lower high. We're looking for a daily lower high compared to 6160. However, 
and and this is going to be weird i would not bet against these bulls because the unusual option call activity and they were writing puts yesterday dark pool activity they were hammering this name yesterday that's why it had a 5.93 percent move every time they sell these options to open they have to buy some of the underlying and they were just buying it buying it buying it so if i were looking for zim today i would look for first five or 15 minute oversold back burner trades versus shorting it i just, the bulls were all over this one today well i felt like we just had a great show okay nugget scott that is gdx i went over gdx so it's the same thing NVIDIA is looking strong this morning. 227.77 is the number. Tesla, I didn't like it as much this morning. I tried to find a trade. It has earnings after hours, folks. And I'm an options trader, so I hate trading it on, I hate trading options before earnings with those juice premiums, unless I'm going to figure out an iron condor to sell. But I'm just not into it. Tesla, I'm bullish Tesla. Let's just say that. I'm bullish Tesla, but... I'm not excited about earnings after hours. All right, that's it for me. Thank you for joining me. Hit that like button. Go follow me on Twitter, Charkow Lori. Tell your mama and them about Charkow Lori. Go check out chartguys.com and use stop losses.